Good day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content, and guys, I'm just about to fly out to PAX Australia tomorrow, and I'll tell you what, DBG just wanted to give me a little going away gift in the form of a brand new PTS update for Planet Side 2, including some brand new Doku Empire specific assault rifles that we have been waiting for for a very long time now. Now, of course, in today's video I'm going to cover multiple elements of the patch, but the first First thing I want to do, of course, me being me, is discuss the new rifles. I want to give off some new first impressions of the rifles and share some early feedback for the developers on what we're seeing here. Something to note out of the gate here is that all of these weapons are burst fire weapons. It is quite nice to see some time and creativity being thrown into the burst fire side of the game here considering that we've only really got one burst fire weapon in the game that isn't a simple reskin, if you will, of the default weapons for each faction, that being the Sabre 13. Anyway, enough about that. That, let's get into the new weapons and see what we're dealing with here. We're going to start off with the NC, who have got the MGR-A1 Vanquisher. Now, this is a 200 maximum, 167 minimum damage profile weapon with a 451 rounds per minute firing rate. So, this is going to be a burst weapon with the most stopping power on the NC at the time of making this video. And my god, does it feel good to use. You can dish out a one burst kill on a target with three headshots at any range. And that is plain devastating. Mind you, this is without things like nanoweave armor or the heavy assault armor being a thing. But sweet Jesus, the stopping power on this thing is just plain old ridiculous. And to make that better, the recoil here is very minimal. This is very clearly aimed to be a weapon that you can make use of at further ranges. Like seriously, this weapon's recoil is the least NC thing about it. This is kind of like a burst fire battle rifle even. I'd be willing to sort of put the weapon into that category. It's not really designed to get too up close and personal, but if you you know, obviously the range of shots in the right place, it's not going to matter anyway, you're still going to nail a guy in one burst, but I feel as though there's a lot of focus on making this thing a burst fire battle rifle. Something interesting here is that you can also equip Sabo ammo, which is an attachment only really available to the bishop at this stage. Now, for all of those who are unfamiliar with the ammo type, this is an ammo that will pierce through one target and hit whatever is behind them. Now, on a weapon like the bishop that is more or less designed to pick away at a target, at a time. It isn't the most useful ammo type, but it's something you equip anyway because there's not really a disadvantage to having it on the bishop. You might just get a lucky collateral if you are lucky. But on a weapon like this, where you're most likely going to come across groups and even choke points of targets, hallelujah, this is going to be a grand old time. The weapon's rate of fire does take a 10% hit with this attachment, but if you focus on remaining at range and going for those headshots, that isn't really going to be a huge factor here at all. And again, the accuracy is going to mean that the headshots aren't going to be a problem here. There is also a thing called Destructor Ammunition, which will strip 75 shields and 6% of maximum ability energy from a target. Target. This is, in other words, a big fuck you to heavy assaults, but it also does lower the weapon damage to 125 across the board. Essentially, it will dish out 200 damage against shielded targets before being thrown into a lesser damage state. It's an interesting ammo type, but I will need to use it in combat to find out if it's worth it. I can imagine it being very, very deadly against heavy assaults, however. Overall, this weapon feels really good to use. It's tight, and I mean really tight. I haven't been this excited for a new gun to come to the game for a while, especially for the NC. So I'm really excited to see how this weapon performs in a fight outside of the VR room, because in the VR room, it is deadly. Now, moving on to the Vanu Sovereignty side of things. These guys are getting the VE-A Lacerta. This is a 167 maximum damage, 125 minimum damage, 566 rounds per minute fire rate weapon. It's a three round burst, and like the Vanquisher, will take the crown as the highest damage burst weapon available to the Vanu Sovereignty. Now, while it doesn't dish out as much damage as the NC option, it does bolster a faster rate of fire, which in actuality will see the weapon match the time to kill of the NC option, just in a slightly different way. Recoil here is also incredibly minimal, but the minimal damage is not as high, so it will take extra bursts at longer ranges to snag kills. It seems as though this weapon has been best suited for a more 
medium range option. It's still a very accurate weapon, but that lacking extra damage at those further distances means that you will need one or two more bursts to score a target. So it is very much leaning away from being a battle rifle per se, kind of like what the Vanquisher is, and is very much still a hybrid assault rifle, if you will, just more or less tailored to a further range, which I feel as though the Vanu assault rifle lineup could be using that kind of gap to fill. Now, a very interesting aspect about this weapon is the fact that it has an ammo type called lashing ammunition, which, as you can probably guess, gives the projectiles a small amount of splash damage and basically makes the weapon a mini lasher. It converts 40% of the weapon's direct damage into a small splash damage. But don't panic NCOTR, this ammo type certainly doesn't feature the same oomph as the original Lasher and the corresponding splash damage does. The splash damage alone is just simply nowhere near enough to score a crap ton of kills. It's just going to be a bit of a nuisance, if anything. This is, rest assured, not going to be a case of combat medics running around with the Lasher everywhere. If anything, it'll be used to score some nice secondary damage on targets where the choke points are a thing, but... The 50% hit on the muzzle velocity is also a brutal part about this ammo type, and I can probably imagine that most people will just stick to using the standard ammunition with this gun. Overall, this does feel like a very good weapon, and it feels like it's in a good place at the moment, and the devs have done well here, making the weapon feel like a noteworthy addition to the arsenal, and still be its own thing without copying the NC option directly, so props to the devs on that front. However, this does put us at the MG-A1 Arbalest, the TR assault rifle, and yeah, I wish I had nicer things to say about this gun. The Arbalest is unique, as it already has a burst fire companion in the arsenal of the Sabre 13, which already focuses on being a longer range, higher damage burst rifle. So, this weapon has a new niche to fill, something that the other two are certainly not doing. It's a 125 maximum damage, 100 minimum damage, 600 rounds per minute fire rate weapon, but it fires 6 rounds in a burst at a time. So straight out of the gate it's clear that this weapon is more or less a quantity over quality close range burst weapon, and the accuracy here shows that it has a brutal horizontal kick that really can't be countered, making for a fairly messy experience out of the gate. I do kind of want to have a look at the recoil valves and see exactly what's going on here because it just doesn't feel quite right right now, but it just really does make for a messy sort of long range experience with the gun. Now this can be somewhat circumvented by the impact ammunition, which makes the weapon's minimum damage 125, effectively giving it no damage drop off at the expense of six rounds in the mag. So overall, that's quite a nice niche actually. I do not mind that at all. You can also put on a unique barrel attachment that reduces the vertical recoil by 30%, that also reduces burst refire time by 7%, which in actuality is very minimal, you won't really have to worry about that being a huge impact on the weapon's performance. However, the weapon does fall short regardless in close quarters thanks to its lacking time to kill. The weapon's theoretical time to kill is 0.21 seconds slower than the other two weapons listed above that we've already discussed, which when combined with its sloppy accuracy makes for a fairly difficult weapon to use. If we buff the rate of fire to 780 rounds per minute, which I know seems pretty massive, but that does actually get us to a theoretical time to kill that brings the weapon more in line with the other two factions weapons that we've already looked at. I mean, the weapon's base close quarters combat time to kill is 0.75, and for any gun that is a fairly abysmal time to kill, I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah, take notes, DBG. I think some improvements need to be made before the Arbalest makes it to live. Also, just as a final closing note, the weapon can mount an underbarrel incendiary grenade launcher. I can only imagine the chaos we're gonna face here. Anyway, on top of me throffing over new weapons, the frag grenades have also been given new particle effects that are now faction specific, and the Vina grenades have now been turned into plasma grenades, which is a nice little touch to give the factions a bit more identity, if you will, on the battlefield. I will say that the TR and NC, you know, particle effects aren't too differing. There's a slight difference there, but you know, it's nothing too major. The Varna grenades are now a big green explosion, so you're definitely going to know when the Varna were throwing grenades in. But the grenades are also getting a minimum blast damage buff of 10 to 50, which means that we're going to see a lot of these new effects on the battlefield when the buffs hit the live servers. I think we're going to see a lot more grenades now. 
interesting to see the devs making that change. Sticky Grenades have also been given the same minimum damage buff while having their blast outer area range reduced to 5 meters. To further incentivize the accuracy with the grenades, like you need to actually stick a target to get the most out of them, the Thumper has also received a buff to its reload time, its refire rate, as well as the incendiary ammo attachment in an attempt to make it more usable as a primary weapon, but I personally still stand by my opinions in the review where it should be a launch option over a primary weapon, but that is just me. We've also seen some fairly major changes being made to the vehicles. I don't have enough time to go over all of them in this video. When they hit the live servers, I might have some more time to go over it. But there is a couple of important changes. Most importantly are the changes coming to the Dalton. We all remember when the Combined Arms Initiative hit the game a while back, and one of the playstyles that was quickly killed off was the way of the solo Liberator playstyle with the Dalton, using it to one-shot ESFs. You guys know the drill. Well, after a lot of very vocal feedback, the weapon is in fact returning to its former glory, being able to one-shot non-composite armor ESFs. Is it a change that has come too late? I think so. I don't think this change should have gone live anyway, because there was already a lot of negative feedback surrounding that in the first place. I don't know why the devs stuck to their guns so long. But, it appears as though the gun is being returned to its former glory, and therefore we may see some players who were sort of driven away by that change come back to the game and enjoy it in its current state. The Bulldog is also getting a buff across the board uh, in the form of its damage on all platforms, but it's also having its magazine size reduced to bring it more towards a heavy artillery roll from what I can tell. But guys, that's pretty much everything I've got time to discuss in this video. As I said, I should be packing and getting ready to fly out for packs, but all of these uh, changes made their way to the test server and I just had to do a video on them before I went away. So guys, if you enjoyed today's video, a backhanding of that like button would be greatly appreciated. And if you find yourself backhanding that like button, backhand that subscribe button while you're at it, you guys are going to be seeing a lot of PAX vlogs coming next week, as well as a bunch of content on Planetside Arena, Planetside 2, all the bells and whistles, guys. So I cannot wait to get that out for you. Also, feel free to follow me on my social media to get a more close look as to what I'm going to be doing over the PAX weekend, as well as as you know, catching up on my Twitch streams and that sort of thing, guys. Either way, hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys.